Okay, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Chris McGuire. I'm a project manager and water resource engineer in Christchurch. Now, uh, I kind of thought a lot about this presentation. I thought a lot about how do I sell myself, because effectively that's what I'm doing here. And I thought, well, did I always want to be an engineer? So I asked my mum to send me some photos. Uh, these are the two photos she sent me. Uh, athlete uh, Chris or engineer Chris at three years old. So this is me running a 3K run, and this is me trying to fix my bike, or just playing. The truth is, I want to be a fireman. I didn't want to do anything. I just want to be a fireman. And I kind of thought about that. Why do I want to be a fireman? And really, the reason was because I just wanted to help people. I wanted to do something that I could just go out and help people every day of my life, because that's what I'd like to do. So how did, I, how did this fireman become an engineer? So I started off in Belfast um, with MWH in 2008. I moved to, I got the opportunity to move to Hamilton, sunny Hamilton, the Tron, city of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Don't diss it, it's my city, all right? I actually used to live just where this is pointing, um, on River Road. I got to work with the local councils there, with um, Waipa, Hamilton, with Waikato District. And it was really great to see the difference between what I was used to in Northern Ireland to the amazing culture that was here. Then 2010 happened, the September 2010 earthquake. And for me as an engineer, I'm, uh, for me as a person, I'm really glad that, that nobody was, was hurt in that one. There's some injuries, but no one was killed. For me as an engineer, it was quite an interesting concept that a, a city could be damaged. I actually went down to Christchurch. So I have friends who moved down two weeks before the earthquake. I went down with my parents in November 2010. And I celebrated my birthday in the Retour, which was the band Rotunda, just opposite the CTV building. February 2011 happened. Everything changed. Everyone changed. This famous photograph, just shown everywhere, is the moment when it all happened. The moment people's lives changed in Christchurch forever. The moment people in New Zealand's lives changed forever. Realized that this can't happen. This is real. You've got liquefaction happening, where you've got cars can fall into the ground like that. And you've got lateral spreading, where the actual land beside rivers can actually move apart. A massive amount of lives were lost in this earthquake. Luckily, there wasn't more, but there was loss of life. It's important to recognize that, but it's also important to recognize that a lot of other people's lives depend on the engineering behind the things we don't see. What is underneath this road? This road is the access way for life. The, in, the electricity supply, the water supply, the stormwater and the wastewater are the lifelines of a city. I knew that I, I couldn't do anything immediately after the earthquake, and that wasn't what I was there to do. I knew that I wanted to go down, and I had to help. I got the opportunity to work um, in Skirt, and um, Kip really described what Skirt was about, but I want to kind of go into a bit more, because for me, it was something very different than normal um, way of working. For me, it was all about working collaboratively in a team and being able to put yourself out there and encourage everyone else to come up with you. The ethos of Skirt was creating resilient infrastructure that gives people security and confidence in the future of Christchurch. Being able to do that and to give people confidence in the future of Christchurch is something very special. So this is what Skirt looks like. Okay? The, the 300 people in that one room actually extends out to thousands of people. You've got the three client organizations, CIRA, Christchurch City Council, and NZCA, and along with the five main contractors. And then this is where Kip and I actually sit, is in this design delivery team integrated services team. This is where I sat along with 20 other design organizations. Kip works for Becca. We work side by side in this and normally competing environments in Auckland. You know all about it. We normally fight. But in this organization, we shared ideas, we shared designs. Everything was about creating resilient infrastructure for the future and people of Christchurch. This is what drove me. So what did I do in Skirt? I worked on pressure main 11, which was a pressure main that comes from pump station 11 all the way 3.6 kilometers to the Bromley Treatment Works. This was the very first project that came into Skirt, and in fact, I started a month before Skirt actually opened its doors. The original pumps, the original pressure mains that went along this route, um, there was like two cast iron ones, they completely got buggered. And there was concrete ones, and the concrete ones fractured in multiple places along the route because they weren't resilient, they weren't designed resiliently. We were instructed by the client it was to be glass reinforced plastic, it was GRP because this had performed well in other things. So we took this on board, 
But the other thing about this is it takes 30% of Christchurch's wastewater. That's a approximately 120,000 people. But in fact, if pump station one goes out, it diverts to this catchment. So basically, it can take most of Christchurch through this pressure main. This is one of the most important pressure mains in the city. So what did I do? Um, one of the main points of the, the failures along the pressure main routes was at these thrust blocks. So whenever you turn a massive bend, the thrust, that's in the thrust that can be in enforced in the pipe can break the pipe itself. So you put these big concrete thrust blocks behind it. And that's the normal way you do it. And that's the way we've done it forever. But in an earthquake situation, what happens? These massive concrete thrust blocks sink a lot faster than the pipe itself and fracture at the points. So then we have to think, well, what is everyone else doing worldwide? This isn't, we're not the first one to have an earthquake in a city, so what's everyone else doing? We invited people over from um, LA, Los Angeles Public Works Department, from Kobe University, and from Kobe City Utilities, or Kobe City Water, and we actually asked them, like, what do you guys do? Because I showed them the designs that I had researched, I showed them the designs that we tried before, and I said, do you think this is a good idea? What, what is your comments? We showed them some other things and said, what about this, what about that? And we find that this design, it was really quite effective in reducing differential settlement between the pipe itself, and it can help prevent those, those existing failures. And in fact, this one is actually on the, set, on the concrete main, we got asked by the council afterwards to say, it fractured after the earthquake, and they said, can you fix it with your one again? The other thing about it is, uh, we in, I created this gabion basket around a pipe, because whenever we had multiple, multiple, multiple meetings and arguments over what is the strength of a liquefied soil. Uh, nobody knows. We haven't been able to test it. So far, there's equivalent ideas, but no one actually really knows. So the normal support you have is the normal support from the native soil. So how strong is the soil? You compact, aggregate against the pipe. You have the ground below it. And then you have this weight above it, which tries to push it out of shape. In the liquefied soil scenario, you don't know what that strength is going to be at the side. So the native soil is gone. So what we did, what I did was um, put a geogrid support around this. And what happens is whenever the pipe tries to push out, the geogrid holds it in place. Right, but this costs about a million dollars. So the contractor said, no, we're not doing it. We are not doing that. We said, well, you have to do it because we need to create resilient infrastructure for the future and people of Christchurch. And they said, well, that's a million dollars extra on the project. So we said, right, let's test our ideas. So I designed a testing method, which was we used the geotextile just in a normal trench format like this. We used nothing, so it was a standard test control. And I, I designed the second one, which was the geogrid and the geotextile. Um, what we, I say we because I don't like saying that this is, this is all me. I designed all this, but as we work as a team in skirt, and I'm just inducted into that we in skirt. Um, so I designed this, desi uh, this testing method, and then we, I got a, a laser profiler to go through it, and we took away all side support. So we simulated the most extreme environment that it could ever happen, no side support, and that never happens. That'll never happen. And what we, what we proved uh, was that the pipe itself was strong enough. We didn't need the geogrid, but what we also proved was the geogrid reduced deflection by 30%. But because the pipe could do it itself, we could take this out and save a million dollars. So by doing this test, I was able to prove that we didn't need it, the pipe were confident in itself, and we can create resilient infrastructure. Outside of skirt, I was involved in everything. Um, <laughs> IPENS is a big part of my life, and since I've came to New Zealand, that has been a very massive part of my life. I uh, was the Ingenerate um, Waikato Chair about six months after I came here. I moved down to Christchurch, I got involved in the committee, and then I was shoulder tapped to ask to be the, the chairman for the IPENS main branch in Canterbury. Um, that was an amazing opportunity for me to serve 2,500 engineers and to encourage that, uh, that idea sharing, that collaboration, and really drive the industry forward in a time whenever Construction is the main engineering focus in, in Christchurch and the rebuild of the city. This is the education outreach scheme, the uh, volunteer army we did. They're the guys that lift the lift faction. But an interesting one was the gap filler and the spaces that created behind from all this demolition. We went in and we created this mini golf gap filler so that the community could actually still play in these places, but describe what engineers do 
through the uh, mini golf. So if you go down to Christchurch, you can play on our uh, Peterborough, 100 Peterborough Street, the Gap Fuller Mini Golf, and uh, our nicely branded little cones there. Yeah. So why, why did I talk about this? Why, why would, what would I say to three-year-old Chris? How did three-year-old Chris get here, and what would I tell him to do? Well, the first thing is never stop asking why. The main point that I found working in Skirt was that you always have to ask questions. In this challenging situation where something is extremely different, ask questions. The only way you'll change something is to challenge it. Challenge, challenge, challenge. That three-year-old who just wouldn't stop asking questions is that 29-year-old who now is able to design resilient pipelines. Communication is key to creating innovation solving problems. Working in an intensive environment that is skirt would not work without open and honest communication. And take that back to every one of your businesses. You have to communicate effectively, and as engineers, we don't do it well, and we have to do it better. To upskill this industry, we need to communicate. Share everything you learn and create. After Skirt, there will be a package of designs. Everything we've done is owned by the government and will be given to the industry and, uh, and shared around the industry. But the biggest thing, that fireman, that fireman inside me, being an engineer allows you to build a better world. Through doing this, I can be that fireman. Thank you. Come on, guys, you can do better than that. <laughs> Have more questions today in the office. Yeah? Will the uh, tunnel, should the tunnel is about 30 meter or 50 meter uh, deep? And uh, how about your design, how deep? And, uh, oh, the, the pressure main, how deep is the pressure main? Actually, I didn't even explain the, the area you worked in. Uh, the big thing about Chrysler's designs was that the, the deeper the one, deeper the pressure mains that failed, cost a lot of money to fix. So we tried to keep this in the top um, three meters. So this was actually only three meters deep. But it going through that area, that is in a highly um, urban area. It has one of the main arterial routes going through it. So we had to cross one of the main arterial routes through Christchurch at Christmas time, outside a shopping center, which was a really bad idea at the time, but that's what we had to do. Um, so we try to keep these shallow, and it also meant there's a lot of other crossings we had to take into account. So the stormwater, the water, the wastewater is all in that top three meters. So there's a lot of interaction with everyone else, all the stakeholders. And that's why I say we, is because there's a lot of engagement with a lot of people in this project. Thank you. I've got a why for you. <laughs> Yeah, well, the client, the client was Chrysler City Council at the time. Um, and they requested this GRP because whenever you looked at the PE pipe, for the PE, it was going to be a massively thick wall for that, that size diameter. And also, that's going to be extremely heavy. But not only that, the construction methodology behind that, imagine having those massive, huge strings and trying to drag them. It really wasn't going to be that effective. These are 5.8 meter lengths with double bell couplings, which give us like 100 mil settlement ability but it also means you can work on multiple fronts at the same time and then come to one place and join. So it actually allowed us a lot more flexibility in the construction techniques around it. Chris, where are the pipes sourced? Uh, the pipes were actually sourced um, uh, from India um, by a company called Amiantite, um, but Maskell's brought them in for us. But Maskell's actually were the ones who created the sweat bands. So that 70 degree band, which I would never recommend to anybody to ever put in, but it was there and we had to replace what was there. Um, that was actually created by Maskell's using mitered bands and then they laminated around that. Really, really um, labor intensive to do those bands, but that has to be done in New Zealand because it was specialized. Everything else, the standard pipes all come from India, but you can actually get them made in Australia now. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>